today's topic we are continuing with uh, the the book in the same chapter or the same section on marriage a foretaste of heaven now today we're going to look at an interesting chapter and it's called married life gets better and better and now let me preface this by saying that um on february 24th 2021 of course i was having a conversation with a friend of mine and he's married okay and he is 48. he told me mario you if you get the wrong woman then your life will go from here down to the pit if you get a good wife then you're gonna keep going up and one thing that he said was if you get the bad woman all the money that you have been um, saving can be booked in one day if you get a bad woman in one day all your money can be booked just like that but if you get a good woman all that money can be multiplied and i thought of i thought of that as hmm so to all the people contemplating marriage uh, this is something that you need to pray about even if and as it told me even if you're not contemplating marriage yet still ask God if there is a person that he has installed for you ask him to guide you to that person or to get that person to you and I'm like okay I can do that but married life gets better and better it doesn't get better according to the world's perspective but the biblical perspective so without further ado Men and women can reach God's ideals, ideal for them, if they will take Christ as their helper. Okay. What human wisdom cannot do, His grace will accomplish for those who give themselves to Him in love and trust. His providences can unite hearts in bonds that are of heavenly origin okay love will not be a mere exchange of soft and flattering words hmm. The loom of heaven weaves with warp and woof finer, yet more firm, that can be woven by the looms of earth. The result is not a tissue fabric, but a texture, a texture that will bear wear and test and trial. Heart will be bound into heart in the golden bonds of a love that is enduring L Y L 16.3 uh, let's see so remember I mentioned that this we're going to talk about is according to the Bible 
or the first sentence already tells us that it has to be with Christ's help. Let, let's put it that way. Um, many people might be thinking, well, I don't believe in the Bible, and I don't believe in God, and my marriage is perfectly fine. We have to understand, Satan does not attack people that he has in his pocket already. So if you're not, if you if your life is going smooth, you need to ask God what's going on. Because the Christian life doesn't go smooth. Because Satan always attacks and attacks and attacks. Yeah. If your life is smooth, then something wrong is happening. Satan does not attack those that he has in his pocket. And your marriage life is one of the things that Satan hates the most after the Sabbath. Yes, after the Sabbath, Satan hates marriage. So if your marriage is going smooth, that's because he already knows that there's no need to worry about you because he already has you in his pocket. He's not going to bother you. He's going to bother those that are seeking to follow God. That's the difference. Now, um, if you think about it, actually, in this paragraph, you have to understand that the, 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 the bulk of of it is do you have Christ in the midst now I'm not asking if you claim to have Christ because everybody can say well we're gonna let's have Jesus Christ as the center but do you really have Christ or do you just think that you have Christ that's the part that's the thing and we have to uh, address that someday now but I progress. Let's move on. To love. Oh, to love as Christ loved means to manifest unselfishness at all times and in all places by kind words and pleasant looks. These cost those who give them nothing, but they leave behind a fragrance that surrounds the soul. The effect can never be estimated. Not only are they a blessing to the receiver, but to the giver, for they react upon him. Genuine love is a precious attribute of heavenly origin, which increases in fragrance in proportion as it is dispensed to others. LYL 16.4 There we go. Now, uh, this is a, a case of, um, this is the case, the case for Christ, basically. Because remember, in the last video that we talked about, um, we talked about marriage is like Christ's love for his chosen people. Well, what did Christ do for his chosen people? He basically he manifested unselfishness at all times and in all places. So much so he became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross. That was the the highest unselfish thing he could have ever done to to buy us back. Oh yeah, because Satan kidnapped us, as I mentioned. Satan kidnapped us, and he, Jesus had to pay a ransom to get us back. And that is the, the most unselfish thing that he could have ever done, is to die for our sins. And what does that leave now? The fragrance is still permeating the area, not just the entire earth, the whole universe. We are the only stubborn people. And the whole uh, being in the whole universe basically and uh, that right here that marriage life gets better and better it's only in that kind of situation where there is unselfishness 
you know, I, I mentioned in a, in, a, in a video, I think it was the, I think it was the, the make, make courtship last throughout marriage life. And I'm going to put a card up there, up there, up there. And I mentioned that a lot of times the wife would say, I did mention once the baby is born. No, so the, during the married life. So before marriage, there's great courtship. After marriage, the courtship is still going on. After honeymoon, the courtship is still there. But once the baby is born, then the courtship is over. That happens a lot of time. I don't know why. Now, what that does is, because sometimes the mom, the wife will be like, Oh honey, I'm tired. I, I, I had to take care of the baby. I had to go to work. So I don't want to have sex tonight. You know? And, but then she wants the husband to tell her that she's beautiful. That, that she, he likes her. How she did her hair, how she dressed. No, you don't get that. Because it's a partnership. Why are you being selfish into giving your husband the pleasure that he needs, but yet you're asking him to pleasure you in what you need? No. And many times that causes friction or repulsion and then they don't like being around each other anymore. Why? Because they are being selfish. Now, because it's a partnership, okay, let's say you are tired. Well, how about in the morning? Hey, you have a good night's sleep, three in the morning, there is no reason for you two not to be able to have sex at that moment. That's how it works. So, the, 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 the fragrance of unselfishness in a marriage usually ends up in divorce. Or sometimes they stay together for the sake of the children, but they don't like being around each other at all. And there is no more bedroom fun, and you don't hear any good, any good thing coming out of the, out of the mouth of either of the couple. Of the spouses. When you have a Christ life married marriage life center as a center, then the unselfishness does not exist. Yes, Satan will always try to bring it in to bring selfish things in to disrupt the marriage. But if you cling to Jesus, the un the selfish thing is not gonna prevail. And that's the point. So, yes, married life gets better and better only when you practice these things that we, are, we now understand as the reason for a successful marriage. But, I am just a messenger. You can choose to listen or not to listen, but you know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Christ's love is deep and earnest, flowing like an irrepressible stream to all who will accept it. There is no selfishness in his love. In his heaven-born love is an abiding principle in the heart. It will make itself known not only to those who hold most dear in sacred relationship, but to all with whom we come in contact. It will lead us to bestow little acts of attention, to make con concessions, to perform deeds of kindness, to speak tender, true, encouraging words. Encouraging words. It will lead us to sympathize with those Whose hearts hunger for sympathy? LYL 17.1. Yeah. Uh, are you sure? Let's actually take a look at this one. Mm, okay. Did you notice that 
it says it's a it's a deep the love of Christ is deep and earnest flowing like an irrepressible stream to all who will accept it what I mean say this um, since the husband the man is supposed to be the head of the household okay to the man your love and if I do get married my love for my wife should be deep and earnest and like an flack of flowing like a flowing like an irrepressible stream to my wife ladies if you become a wife your love should also be deep and earnest flowing like an irrepressible stream to your husband and the two of you loving each other will give that same love to the children you see the mistake that I see people do a lot and I'm gonna ask that question to, throughout the video I'm gonna ask that question when you are married who do you love first yourself or your spouse that's question number one question number two when you have the baby who do you love first your yourself your spouse or the baby When you have babies, who are you going to put first? Your spouse? The baby? Or yourself? Because that's a very, that's a very important question to, to answer. Um, because I think it is necessary. It is necessary to know um, who comes first in the relationship. If it is unselfishness, then you cannot from you, you cannot come first. That's for sure. You have to come last. That's why you say always say the joy word: Jesus, others, and then you. You come last. Yeah. Let's see what else we can learn. Uh, you know what? Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's. It, okay, we get that part. We get that. Uh, it makes us itself known not only to those who we, we hold most dear in sacred relationship, but to always when we come. Yes, okay. That, that well, that's basically what the, the chapter the chapter is talking about. It's about having Christ at the center of your relationship. That's one. Two. Uh, putting. Making sure your love is deep and earnest and you're unselfish towards your spouse. And that will get your marriage to be successful. And of course, if you see a bunch of bad things going on, praise God. Because Satan is not happy with your marriage and your lifestyle. That's, that's why. When you see those trials, embrace them. Because it is God who's going to be helping you. Because you got Satan trying to destroy your marriage. Alright guys, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. Yes, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, this was Mario Michel. And I hope to see you guys again. Uh, until then. Mario out.